Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to take a look at the 2023 Chevrolet Camaro 2SS. This is the convertible as you can tell. Huge shout out to Carolina Auto Direct for providing this muscle car for me today. Definitely take a look at their website. They have a massive selection of pretty much brand new inventory. That link is down in the description. So this Camaro is finished off in black. They have a starting MSRP right around $52,000. And powering the Camaro is a 6.2 liter V8. This model is paired to the six speed manual transmission. This pumps out 455 horsepower, 455 pound feet of torque. However, this specific model has a stage one supercharger. So those numbers are of course going to be much higher. All that power sent to the rear wheels. This weighs in right around 3,900 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 around four seconds. Top speed is 165. And it also has a fuel capacity of 19 gallons. You'll expect to see around 22 miles per gallon in the city, 30 out on the highway. This also has a wheelbase of 110.7 inches. Its overall length is 190.2. It has a width of 75 and a height of 52.6 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this Camaro, let's start off with the yellow accents that you see coming down both sides of the hood. Matches nicely with this black and there's even the functional heat extraction vent right in the middle. So it gives it a very nice contrast with that bright yellow. And then underneath that, this has a sleek design for the headlight and high beams as well as the turn signals that go into a part of the grille. It's a very sleek design, very thin, looking grill with the Chevy bow tie right in the middle, SS badge over on that driver's side. And then there's plenty more cutouts underneath along with DRLs and then inlets on both sides to provide even more airflow. A little bit of a front lip, as you can tell with the bodywork running throughout it. So it gives it an aggressive look for this muscle car. And as we work our way to the side, this has a staggered setup for the wheels. They're 20 by 10 up front, 20 by 11 in the rear. We get that highlighter yellow for those Camaro Brembo brake calipers and the matte black finish for those double spoke wheels. Camaro badges just behind that. We have the top down too at the moment, which you can actually activate with the key fob. So as long as you unlock it, you can just hold this middle button here. You do have to hold it. You can't just push it once, but you can put the entire top down without actually getting into the vehicle. Looks good either way. That's the point of it being a convertible. You can have it up or down. And of course it is a soft top. And then as we work our way to the back, the yellow stripes continue behind the soft top, go all the way wrapping over the spoiler there, which has the integrated backup camera right in the middle post. So it's nicely hidden away. This has the 3D dimensional design to the LED taillights. There's parking sensors and then the quad tip dual exhaust, which we will take a listen to later because of course this is modified. So it is going to sound very, very good. But let's move on to the trunk space now. You can double tap the button on the key fob or use the more convenient button, which is hidden up underneath. And even though this is a convertible, we have a little bit of storage space. When you have this divider up, that shows you just how much space you have for the top to fold down behind that. Now, when you have the top up, you can actually put that down and that gives you some more storage in the back. So it is still usable even with the top down. It's nice that you can put things in there once you have that divider. So that way you don't have to worry about putting the top down on the fly. As we move to the interior now, very nice door panel finished off in black leather. There's brushed aluminum accents, even the ambient interior lighting. So it's on this entire strip here. There's all the window adjustments, side mirror adjustments too. This is, this vehicle has four windows. So there are windows for your backseat passengers too that you can adjust from up here. We have memory seating, Bose audio, even another release for that trunk and a little bit of space in the back. Now down below, I believe this is aftermarket, but a really nice touch with more of that highlighter yellow. And then the bucket seats, which are finished off in leather, have a great design to them. Now, in order to gain access to the back seats, simply just use that tab to push the backrest forwards. From there, if you need a little bit more space, you can use the automatic control to slide that seat forwards. Now at five foot 10, I have obviously have plenty of room with the top down, wireless charging in the middle, you really don't have any leg room unless you adjust the front passenger seats. You're not buying this to be a practical four seater, but if you needed to have someone in the back, you could make it work for a short period of time. And then with the top up, obviously you can tell I am ducking a good bit. So the headroom is definitely limited at five foot 10, but if I needed to ride around here for a few minutes, I could make it work, but it is mainly for extra storage space and just having that additional practicality 
if you need it. Then we can fold that seat back and then hop up front where we have the beautiful steering wheel. It's finished off in solid and perforated leather with another Camaro logo with the highlighter yellow at the bottom. Now being a manual, this does have the paddle shifters, but as you can tell, they are labeled for rev matching. Now both of them do the exact same thing. So it doesn't matter which one you push on, you can activate the rev matching. And then underneath that there's volume, there's favorites, cruise control, even the heated steering wheel. And then on this right side, there's voice commands and Bluetooth, and all of these are for the gauge cluster. So with my foot on the brake and the clutch, we'll put this into neutral here. We can go ahead and fire this up. And then coming back to the gauge cluster now, tack is on that left side, right side is miles per hour, and in the LCD screen, the upper section has some fixed info, like your fuel level, battery voltage, oil temperature, things like that. And then as you can tell, we're looking at miles per hour. There's also some trip information. If you'd like to look at that, you have fuel range, you can look at some other vitals, just depending on what you would like to see. And then I can scroll back to the left side, where we can go to the performance tab now, there's oil temperature and a lot more vitals that you can scroll through. And then for the last one, we can go down to options. So you can go into a different units, you have your theme display and a few other info pages, speed warning sign that you can go into. So it's a good bit of information that you can scroll through within the gauge cluster. Now on the left side, this also has the head up display. There's a dimmer switch for the gauges, one of the air vents too. And with the head up display currently, it is just showing miles per hour along with your tack and G-force meter. And then right in the middle, we have the touchscreen system. On the home screen, there is a split design with your audio, phone, and navigation. And then you have a bunch of icons, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that you can go through. Now there are some buttons and shortcuts in this lower section here, as well as some physical buttons. You have power and volume and tuning too. Really simple, easy system to go through. Underneath that, this has heated and ventilated seats. The fan rotary dial here is actually to adjust the temperature, which is nice to see. There's where you like the air to go, power sink, all of the rest of your AC controls, fan speed and defrosters in the middle. And then there's the hazards in front of that. For this six speed manual, let's go over to the right and up. That is for reverse, so you get that backup camera. And then behind that, there's traction control, as well as a few different driving modes. So this does have sport, touring, track, and snow and ice. E-brake and 12 volt are behind that. There's two cup holders, a little bit of storage in the center armrest there, as well as in the glove box, you have a good amount of space. What I love about the Camaro though, is it has the digital camera for the rear view. So that gives you a lot more visibility, especially for kind of how tight and hunkered down this is. But even without it, you can still see. It just takes some getting used to having your mirrors lined up right, but it's really not all that hard to see all around. Let's go ahead though and get this out on the road. As we set off now behind the wheel for this Camaro. This thing is very, very loud. It sounds good too. So whoever put on these mods did it right for this V8. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is right around 52 grand. So you're getting a really fun American muscle car. You're not spending a ton of money, but you're also getting a convertible too. And we'll put the top down because that is going to be my favorite part with this exhaust, putting the top down and really hearing this exhaust <laughs> as we get up to speed there. Well, what I love about the, the Camaro here is that it's a really cool muscle car. There's two others, of course. There's the Mustang and the Challenger too. I think the Camaro is my favorite just because I don't see them quite as much. It's a little bit on the smaller side too, so it's a little bit more nimble feeling. This particular model, you could take out on some back roads, maybe on the track, things like that. It's not the most track focused, but it's definitely a good option to go with if you're looking for some practicality too. Having the back seats, having a little bit of trunk space, and you still wanna have the convertible top. So it's a good option if you're not looking to spend a ton of money. And it definitely has some power. Now the stage one kit, whatever they did to this vehicle, I don't know the horsepower increase over the stock one, but this seems to be pretty quick and get up. 
and we'll give it a little bit of gas here. We got some pops in that exhaust too, which definitely sounds good. But aside from that, just driving this, this would make for a really good daily driver. It's super comfortable and quiet. What I love about modern convertibles too is that this doesn't really feel or sound like it's a convertible. If you look at it, of course you can tell, but just driving normal, I don't have any issues with it. It's very well insulated for the speeds that I'm doing today. Of course, the wind might affect that a little bit, but so far seems pretty solid. So I wouldn't really worry about, you know, it's a raggedy soft top, whatever. It's got a really nice design to it. And I really like how modern vehicles are making them uh, very enjoyable. So that way you can drive them every day. And from second gear, here we go. With a mild acceleration, we're up to speed and hopefully you could hear that exhaust. Kind of hard to miss in this car. But let's talk about the top now. Should be able to do that under around uh, 20 miles an hour or so. So we have no traffic, we can put that down and we'll just stay for here for right now. But I think you can go right around 20 miles an hour or so and put this down. So it'll tell you once it's ready, we are done. And we're gonna put the windows up just for the audio purposes. So really easy to do that. I think it sounds really good. And with the windows up, hopefully you should be able to hear me. It's really not all that bad. It's very composed for 45 miles an hour or so here. And it's what you would expect to get that top down experience. We still have the camera there, which is nice. So with the top down, but you still have plenty of visibility with the uh, top up too. But it's very nice. It's a beautiful day to have this top down, beautiful day to listen to this exhaust. Woo! Definitely sounds good, but this is what I really enjoy with a convertible, being able to hear that exhaust note just a little bit more makes it that much more enjoyable if you wanna go rip on this in the mountains or something like that. Definitely a lot of fun. But as we come to a stop or a slow down a little bit, we'll go under 30 miles an hour, see if we can get that top up. We are still going too fast, so it might be 20 miles an hour. There we go, maybe 25. But it's an easy process to do. I would say maybe takes 15, 20 seconds. It's not all that bad. But it's nice that you can do it while you're moving. And there we go. Windows back up for the audio. And with one last acceleration, that is going to end today's review for the 2023 Chevrolet Camaro 2SS. Once again, a huge shout out to you at Carolina Auto Direct for providing this muscle car for me today. Check out their website. That link is down below. Give it a huge thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.